is is you know she's not a professional medium, but she she did have these these abilities before. So we go in, and we split a large group into two groups. One group with June and her friend and my cameraman Cody. They go down in the women's bathroom, and then I take a group up to the auditorium and see if we can pick up if they can pick up anything. So while I'm in the auditorium with my group, we suddenly hear someone yelling in Chinese. And all of our heads turned at the same time. It was so loud. And I pushed my flashlight out because there's nobody in our group that spoke Chinese um, except me. And there was nobody there. And so I thought, oh, well, you know, we're in Chinatown, probably noise from the street bounced in or something. It sounded like a, for me, it sounded like a very southern dialect, maybe very country or very old. Like, it just sounded like something similar to Cantonese, but not quite Cantonese. Uh-huh. Anyway, but then somebody from downstairs comes up, a woman comes up, she's one of the guests, and she told me, she said, the friend of your, the psychic medium, she, get, she, she she's very upset right now because she felt like a female spirit was trying to jump into her body. And I looked over at the lobby and I could see June trying to comfort this friend of hers. And then my cameraman, Cody, said she she was mumbling something that sounded like Chinese. And she's a, a, a pocket, you know, white middle-aged woman who's never studied Chinese before. That and is... he recorded her. Like she said something and then she ran out of the bathroom saying something that sounded like Chinese up upstairs. And he has a recording of this. And we've been trying, we've asked a couple of Chinese people, like, do you know what they're saying? And they, they, they don't because it it's like a, really it sounds like a very old or very rural dialect. And uh, in addition to that, um, so this woman feels like the spirit tried to jump into her, and probably she did, because I don't know why she could speak something that sounds like Chinese. Well, I'm going to say, June, I'm gonna say this. One of uh, our listeners, who is a steady listener, Karen Banks, is saying that she is a jumper, you know, jump, uh, it jumps uh, living people. Uh, you know, from maybe uh, from person to person. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was very frightening. And in addition to that, June uh, was hit. Something hit her beside the head and I think punched her between the shoulder blades. And she's like, she's a, you know, she's been doing this for a long time. She's a professional psychic medium. She's like, my God, I can't believe they're doing this to me. Well, that can happen. They can get physical. Those are the type of spirits you really don't want to be around. Uh, And so, yeah, and I don't think it was a woman who did that because there were male spirits there too. And perhaps something shady going on, you know, we never know what happened in that theater besides the, you know, upfront business of operas and movies, we don't know. But so she got attacked, and then I, as the tour guide, was starting to wonder, is this even safe for me to take people in here? You know, it's supposed to be some spooky fun. I'm not expecting people to feel like they're being possessed or whatever you call it, or a hit. And then, oh, uh, another couple, which was, uh, there was a couple also, not on this tour, but a previous one, they went home after the tour, and the dog would not come near them after that. Mm-hmm. And he actually filmed the dog cowering in its little container. He says, usually the dog comes running to me. He's like, now the, the, the dog runs in fear. And he's like, I don't know what's going on. And he was telling me this, and his wife, basically, after, I don't know, a few days of this, she's like, whoever's here, get out. You're, you cannot be in my house. So we were wondering if something followed him home. And then another friend of mine who was on the tour, she felt someone knocking and scratching on her wall above her. This is the same one who, same friend who uh, got up in the middle of the, the night and felt a ghost in the bathroom. She after she actually joined my tour and felt something, heard something scratching on her wall above her head while she's laying in bed and knocking. <laughs> yeah, again, Karen was mentioning too, you know, jumpers can be scary, showing their memories, making you feel their physical feelings uh, from uh, when they were alive. And as she also says, they can hurt you if they uh, are angry. Yeah. 
I uh, learned. Or I never heard about. Yeah. So those were the, that was very intense for me personally. And then um, a while after this, you know, things keep happening. Sometimes it drags on for a year. Things don't stop happening even after you investigate. Um, okay, around the tour time, I was researching the history of the locations, and I uh, have this book called The Barbie Co- Coast. I just wanted to know what San Francisco was like in the 1800s and early 1900s. And so I came to the section about Chinatown sex slaves. And it talks about how young girls as young as 12 were brought, you know, kidnapped, brought to Chinatown as sex slaves. And when they were too mentally or physically broken to continue, they would take them into an alley that they called a hospital. Of course, it wasn't a hospital. What it really was was there were these rooms off of these alleys, and they would put these girls on a rice mat on a plank in these rooms with a bowl of rice, a bowl of water, and an oil lamp. And then they would lock these girls in there until just let them die. And that's well, how they got rid of them. Well, you know, back so, back, you know, in that time frame, don't forget, I mean, it was not just that going on. They were also, you know, kidnapping people, you know, uh, uh, in the taverns and, and all kinds of places and drag oh, yeah. them down into the caves and then load them on ships as deckhands, you know, and they come to, they're out in the middle of the ocean. What are they going to do? They can't swim back to shore. I mean, that yeah. went on a lot of kidnappings, all kinds of stuff, drugs, you name it, was oh, all yeah. going yeah. on in those caves. And and have you actually, I just out of curiosity, and we'll get back to what you're talking about. Have you ever gone down through any of those caves? Not caves, um, Tunnels. I mean, I've heard of tunnels, about tunnels, tunnels. I'm sorry. Tunnels. Um, there's, there's one place we went to where they have a section of one of the tunnels that's accessible, and that's the uh, the Artists and Craftsmen Art Supply Store in San Francisco. So uh, we walked into that. It's very short and small, but it's interesting because that's one of the tunnels. Yeah, they went everywhere, yeah. and I, I mean, it was so bad that that between the prostitution and the kidnappings, the murders, all that stuff. So. You know, when you start getting into these old buildings like that, I don't know how old that theater was, but I got a funny feeling it was probably made in, what, 1870s, 1880s, something like that? The theater itself was uh, built in 1925, but I don't know what else was there. I think I looked on the old maps, and there used to be a saloon there before that. So who knows, you know, what was happening before the, the theater was built even. Um, but back to my story. So I was reading this book, um, and it mentions these girls being closed and, to, and left to die in these rooms off of these alleyways. And it named one of the alleyways and it's called Cooper Alley. So I was curious. I went online. I was wondering if this alley still exists. And so I go on Google Maps and I find it. I'm like, oh wow, it still exists. And I do a street view and I see the, it's a narrow alley. There's a photo and I rotate the photo. And then I find out that alley is right across the street from the Great Star Theater. Oh, wow. I swear I backed up from the laptop and I just had chills. I mean, the chances, the odds. Well, it, you know, you got to be careful when you go to some of these places because I've a good one of my regular guests on my show, she's a medium and she goes out uh-huh. with a priest sometimes when they go out and do their thing to like take whatever when somebody's possessed. And she went through one of those things once and uh, she had one of those entities follow her home. And then it started getting really bad because like in the huh. morning, all of a sudden she was wakes up and she's all full of scratches and her boyfriend's oh, thinking, okay, she's doing this on her own. And you yeah. know, it got worse over a couple of days and all of a sudden she'd be looking at her arm and a, a scratch would appear and her boyfriend, it was really starting to think maybe something is wrong with her. And then it happened, you know, right in front of oh. her boyfriend, a scratch appeared and she started bleeding. And, uh, yeah. And she said to me, you got to be really careful because, you know, some of these spirits will follow you home and not just follow you home, kind of get possess you. And, uh, you got to be careful. Yeah. It's, uh, that's kind of 
something it crosses my mind sometimes because we're you know we're just following psychic mediums and investigators we are not always sure how to protect ourselves I know, and that's what's bad because you don't want the last thing you want is to get possessed, especially you know, you know. But now, uh, what else is? Have you had things like on your your camera equipment you use? I don't know. Now, my I'm old school. You know, uh, it was either video or towards the last, it was digital. I, I take it you guys use digital cameras. Yes. Have you got anything weird on any weird images? Uh, when you've been into these locations that you can't account for? Not on our, our cameras. It's that I think that's that thermal photo that the investigator had on her, her, uh, yeah, her camera. That's the weirdest image that we've seen. How about sounds? Have you recorded any weird sounds that you know that if you guys were the only one in the building or that was unaccountable for? Have, has that happened to you guys yet? So we were in a, a band. It was a building called the Defenestration Building in San Francisco, and uh, it was in a band. It was a shut down building, and we were down in the basement, just me and my camera guy Matthew Abaya, and we made sure we locked the doors. It's in a very sketchy Skid Row neighborhood, so we were very careful. And this is a huge building. It's like several, like four stories high or something. And we were down in the basement and suddenly we hear footsteps above us. And we were like, oh my God, did we leave the door open? You know? So we ran upstairs and checked the door and it was locked. And we couldn't find anybody in there with us. But it was very clear, you know. It was much clearer to our eyes than what we recorded, unfortunately. But both of us looked up at the same time, like, who the heck is upstairs walking? Yeah, I, you know, that's what, when I was telling you about where I was at, you know, when I started hearing those footsteps going up the staircase, I mean, that freaked me out. Because, you know, where I was at, the building next to us was vacant for uh, quite a few years. On the other side of us, the building was an old uh, Bank of California building, and they went out of that building probably 10 years before that. So there was yeah. nobody in that, either one of the buildings, and upstairs was our own building. And, uh, you know, I tell you, it kind of scares you. Even me, a male who went through <laughs> Vietnam and went through all the military training, I tell you what, it scared me so much. Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't work there anymore. I, I really went to a job I look forward to. I mean, you, you could have almost paid me not to. I mean, I would have almost paid them to have that job. That's how much I loved it. And wow. when all this stuff started happening to me, you know, I felt bad because I fired a few people over those 16 years because I thought they were crazy. You know, rumors spreading, you know, about ghosts and all that stuff till it happened to me. And when it happened to yeah. me, then I started realizing there is something out there we can't account for. Yeah. I, uh, I know what you mean. Like I, went in thinking this is all fun and spooky, and then when it really started happening, I, I, I got scared. Like, oh, my God, this, this is real. This is the real thing. Have you thought about having a medium go with you on all these things, just for protection? Oh, yeah, we have June Ahern. She's, on, uh, she's been in many of our episodes on the Haunted Bay, and she actually, oh, she actually warned us about this building, this defenestration building I'm talking about. It's not there anymore. They tore it down. But uh, I told her, I said, hey, I got access to this place. And she suddenly, she I don't remember if she called me or emailed me, but she said, you know, this place is really dark. And I don't think you guys are prepared. So I need to protect you guys before we start the investigation. <laughs> and uh, I told Cody and Cody actually bowed out of this because he's he was scared. He's like, no way I'm going there if she's saying that. So me and two other guys went, and before we started the investigation, she actually did kind of uh, some protection rituals uh -huh. with holy water, and I, I don't really know, but she basically said she helped to close our third eye because it would be too scary for us. And, um, yeah, she did something for us, and... and She's also warned me. She said, you know, you need to know how to deal with possible attachments. Uh, 
I don't know. She she 